Hello friends, welcome to CC Live Lectures. I am Dr. Pavitra Bharadwaj. I am Associate Professor at the Jesus and Mary College, University of Delhi. So friends, we have been talking about operating systems for the past few lectures. And in the last lecture, if you would recall, we were talking about the various services, you know, which are offered by the operating systems. Like we had discussed about process management, we had discussed about how uh, file management is done by the operating systems and we were also talking about uh, memory management of the operating system. So, in continuation with that, we will be talking about mass storage management in today's lecture and then we will also be talking about process management in detail in today's lecture. So, this is going to be an interesting session. So, please keep uh, uh, watching and you know please uh, be knowledge and be, please be informed about the various important concepts of operating system. So, this lecture would be of uh, use to uh, students who are doing any introductory course on operating systems, those who are at uh, bachelor's level or even at master's level, those who are taking an introductory or foundation course in operating system at the moment. So, let us start quickly with our lecture. So, we were talking about you know how memory hierarchy is built in computer systems and we were talking about that you know there are different types of memories within a computer and that memory is actually in a hierarchical fashion, is arranged in a hierarchical fashion. Hierarchical fashion we say because you know there are multiple types of memories, some of them are available as you know mass storage that is they, ha they have enormous storage whereas there are a few memories which uh, are uh, you know those are electronic memories and they have very limited storage capacity. So, a mix of memories are used to pr provide a multitude of you know functions which the memory is to be performing. So, this all this uh, basic knowledge about the memory I hope most of the students at this level would have what are the different types of memories which are available. So, we all understand that the main memory or the RAM it is too small to accommodate all the data and programs right and because the data it holds are lost when power is lost because main memory or RAM is an electronic memory. So, whenever the data, uh, whenever the power goes off the contents of the RAM are lost. So, therefore, computer always has a secondary storage to back up the main memory. So, whatever data is there in the main memory has to be shifted to a secondary storage. So, main memory is also sometimes referred to as primary memory and then you have a secondary memory and most modern day computers they will use disk as the principal online storage medium for both programs as well as data. So, all programs basically and data it resides on the secondary storage which is the disk in most cases and from there it is transferred to the main memory and this transfer of data from the secondary to the main memory is taken care of by the operating system. So, most programs whether it is compilers or assemblers or word processor, editors etcetera, they are all stored on the disk until the time they are loaded and then you know they use the disk as both the source and the destination of the processing. So, therefore, proper management of disk storage is very very important in a computer system. So, operating system it plays very important role in you know disk management because it will look after the free, uh, management of free space, it will look after the storage allocation and it will look after the disk scheduling because you know secondary storage is uh, used very frequently there is constant to and fro movement of data from the secondary to the primary storage. So, therefore, it is it is um, imperative that this storage is managed very efficiently. So, free storage means that you know wherever there is uh, chunks of free storage which are created on the disk they need to be put up together. Right. So, we have disk fragmentation, disk defragmentation. So, various operating system they have these kind of utilities which allow the user to you know uh, coalesce the space, the free space which is available on the disk and all those small small chunks which are there they can be put together so that larger programs or larger data can be stored. And also how a file is allocated the 
disk storage like where a file when a file is to be stored where exactly the file needs to be stored how is the space allocated to a particular file and then how the scheduling is done because ultimately we say that input output uh, you know uh, interrupts or requests which are coming. So, at a, there, are, there are possibilities that at the same time you know multiple programs are wanting to access the disk. So, how the disk scheduling is to be done, which process is going to get uh, the access to the disk, this is also to be uh, taken care of by the operating system. So, when disk is concerned, the operating system performs a lot of crucial functions. So, entire speed of an operation of a computer, it hinges on the speed of the disk subsystem and the algorithms which manipulate the subsystem. So, there are many uses of you know uh, storage which are slower. So, we have disk which is secondary, then there is also tertiary data or tertiary uh, storage which means that you know this is going to be slower and it will be of course lower in cost, but it is going to store much larger amounts of data than the secondary storage. So, there is going to be a backup disk, these can be used uh, for archival data which is you know used very less uh, commonly or it is you know for long term storage this data can be used. So, for these purposes tapes can be used or you know different types of uh, removable disks are used for this. So, magnetic tape drives tapes and CD drives are used and platters can be used. So, all these devices they are called as tertiary storage devices. Uh, besides this you know there are also auxiliary devices like we have the write once read many times. So, we have the worm disk, we have the read write format. So, uh, tertiary devices they are called auxiliary because they are not crucial to the performance of the system. So, the, a system can function very well without these devices also, but they are still very important because they are going to add or they are going to augment the storage space of the computer. So, therefore, it is very important that these storages are also managed. So, some operating systems they take on the task of tertiary uh, storage also to themselves, whereas most operating systems uh, you know they leave this task to the application program. So, they, they do not interfere much with the functioning of the tertiary devices. Some uh, functions of operating system which can you know which are most commonly taken are like mounting and unmounting media in the devices, allocating and freeing the devices for exclusive use by the processes and migrating data from secondary to tertiary storage. So, these are some functions which are taken by an operating system, but the ancillary functions of how the tertiary devices are going to work that are taken care of by the that are left for the application programs to take care. Now, when we talk about different types of memories. So, an important concept which is required uh, attention is the concept of caches or caching. Now, it is a very important principle in computer system because you know we have uh, a hierarchy which we are talking at. So, normally what happens is that you know the CPU is the fastest of all the uh, devices which are you know there in a computer system which works at the at an enormous speed, whereas the main memory of the computer is you know less lesser in speed much lesser in speed as compared to the CPU. We are not talking about absolute numbers just to understand the concept of caching first. So, then you have the secondary memory which is further slower right. So, when CPU is working on data it needs to be it is uh, you know it is running some executing some processes then it needs data at a very fast pace right. So, this space is generally not even you know taken care of by the RAM because as we said the primary memory or the RAM or the main memory it is also slower. So, what is done is that a very high speed small in capacity cache memory is put in between the CPU and the RAM. So, what is the function of this? The function of this cache memory is to overcome the mismatch of speed between the CPU and the RAM. So, basic concept or the basic philosophy behind the con, uh, you know this idea or this notion of caching is to cover up the 
speed mismatch between two devices. So, information now likewise we can also say that there can be a cache between the secondary storage and the main memory also. So, basically if you look at the transfer of data from the secondary to the CPU, then your main memory functions as a cache because main memory is faster than the secondary memory. If you look at the main memory and CPU, then you have the L1, L2 or different types of caches. So, information is normally kept in storage system like the main memory and it has to be copied into a faster storage system that is the cache. Now, cache is also a temporary memory. So, whenever a particular piece of information is required, first the cache is checked. If the information is available in the cache, then it is directly used. If it is not available in the cache, then the information from the source is used. So, from the source means that if it is the CPU and the main memory and there is a cache in between the L1, L2 cache, then if it is not available in L1, L2 cache, then the data is accessed from the RAM and a copy of the data is also put in the uh, cache memory for future use, right. So, that uh, because it is assumed that you know this data will be required again very soon. So, and if it is you know uh, the other cache at any other level, so basically then again the same thing applies that the data is copied from the slower storage to the faster storage uh, keeping a copy in the cache memory. So, besides this you know there are internal programmable registers like we, we know that there is an index register which also provide a high speed cache for main memory. So, these are you know this is what the idea is that how your memory is uh, hierarchy is going to create one cache at the other level. So, the same memory can be a memory uh, for one level and it can function as a cache for the other level. And of course, the L1, L2 cache are pure cache, those are CPU registers cache. So, the programmer or you know the compiler, they implement the register allocation and register replacement algorithms to decide which information is to be kept in registers and which is to be kept in main memory. So, again there are algorithms which will decide on moving in and moving out of data. Other caches which are implemented totally in hardware like uh, you know instruction cache to hold the instructions expected to be executed. So, these caches they are a part of the CPU sometimes and sometimes they are kept outside the CPU. So, if cache is not there definitely the CPU will have to wait for several cycles while an instruction was fetched from the main memory. And for similar reasons, most systems they have one or more high speed data caches in the memory hierarchy. So, mo more than one means that there is one cache within the CPU which is in the form of CPU registers as we just said and there can be another which is outside the main CPU and it is between the main memory and the uh, CPU itself. So, therefore, the main function is to not let or not allow the uh, CPU to remain idle. Now, because these caches they are small in size and because we said that these are small size temporary memory. So, therefore, cache management is also very important uh, aspect when a computer system is being designed. So, careful selection of the size of the cache and replacement policy is also you know and a result is greatly it increases or it enhances the performance of the computer system. Why? Because if you know your cache is too large, so then having a too large cache is going to increase the cost of the computer system to a great deal. If your cache is too small, then constantly data has to be moved out of it uh, and you know data this coming in and going out of data is going to create large amount of overhead. So, actually the benefit which is coming due to the cache will even be uh, you know uh, lesser than the cost uh, and the this time which is elapsed this overhead time which is elapsed in moving in and moving out of data. So, therefore, <coughs> This decision is a crucial decision as in what should be the op optimum 
size of cache which should be uh, you know which should allow a justifiable a reasonable replacement policy and also at the same time it should increase the performance of the system. So, main memory whether it is main memory which is acting as a, as a cache or it is the cache the same principle will apply. So, data keeps on moving in and moving out of the cache. Now, the file system data which resides permanently on secondary storage it appears at several levels in the hierarchy. Right. So, the highest level is the operating system which may contain a cache of file system data in the main memory. So, basically the, the same data item when it is you know available in uh, the cache, it is also available in the main memory, it is also available in the disk and the operating system, it is the responsibility of the operating system to ascertain that the recent data has been fetched. So, solid state disks like we are saying we are talking about the magnetic disk, they are also used for you know high speed storage which is accessed through the file system interface. But the bulk of secondary storage is definitely on the magnetic disk. So, magnetic storage is uh, you know is, is basically backed onto magnetic tapes or removable disk. So, that is going to be a uh, protection against any kind of hard disk failure or protection against any kind of data loss. So, some systems they automatically archive old file data from secondary storage to tertiary storage such as tape jukeboxes or lower storage costs. Many people uh, and you know these servers and all they are also auto configured to basically uh, take you know frequent backup of the data wherever we have data critical data elements are there then automatically the operating system can be tuned to take the backup onto a jukebox or onto some kind of remote storage location. So, the movement of information between levels of storage hierarchy that is from disk to the main memory, from the main memory to the cache and from the cache to the CPU registers, it is you know uh, basically it is implicit or it can be explicit either way, but it depends on the hardware design and the controlling operating system software. So, I was just as we were just seeing that for example, there is a data item A which needs to be you know accessed or which needs to be manipulated by the CPU, the data needs to be worked on by the CPU. So, what happens is that the data transfer from cache to the CPU and registers is usually a hardware function and no operating system intervention is required. Whereas, the transfer of data from the disk to the main memory is coordinated by the operating system. So, therefore, you know uh, in a hierarchical storage the same data will appear at different levels. So, at the same time the data will be available in the main memory, in the hard disk, in the main memory, then it will be in the cache and it will be in the CPU registers. But the in, in uni processor system it is good because the operating system is you know such a way it controls that the highest uh, memory in the hierarchy is accessed for the data item. So, therefore, the operation you know when you are copying the data from A to the cache and to an internal register. So, the copy of A appears in several places right and this if you want to say increment this value of A, there is a number which is stored in this A. So, increment will take place first in the internal register and when the increment has taken place then the value will differ. Uh, in the various storage system. So, the value of A will become the same only when the new value of A is written from the internal register back to the magnetic disk and also in between with the to the cache and the RAM. So, in computing environments where it is only one process which executes at a time, this is ok, there is no difficulty because it will access the highest level of hierarchy, but in a multitasking environment where you know there is uh, CPU is being switched back and forth among various processes then care must be taken because if several processes are accessing A then each process will obtain the most recently updated value of A. 
and the further complicated situation can be when we have multi processor environment that is more than one processor is there and it is maintaining in the internal registers of each of the CPUs. So, in such a case all the registers of all the CPUs they need to be at the same value, the same value of the variable should be there and in once the change is there it should be immediately reflected. So, this situation is basically called as cache coherency. Cache coherency is basically a hardware issue where we want that all the caches should have consistent value. Further in distributed system where you know copies of the value are uh, there of the same file are there then the replicas have to be accessed and done. So, distributed systems will ensure that a replica is updated in one place and all other places are brought up to date as soon as possible. So, with this we come to an end to this lecture on mass storage management. We shall be continuing our discussion till then thank you.